Hello, class. So, I see you're all eager to learn about wireless controllers for older systems. I can just feel your enthusiasm. Except for you. Tone it down. No one likes a kiss ass. Well, rather than me ramble on about how easy these 8-bit dough kits are to install and use, I've brought you this quaint little video. Roll the clip! So, you have your DIY kits from 8-Bit Dough, and now it's time to put them to use. Looks like someone took the extra effort and prepared a couple of controllers already. These kits come equipped with all the tool you need. A screwdriver. And basic instructions. And don't forget the actual product. These printed circuit boards, or PCBs, are pre-manufactured and easy to install. Oops. Looks like someone forgot an important part from his controller. That's okay. We can use these kits on any NES controller. We just have to open it up. Remove the original PCB. Looks like this one was a little dirty, but that's okay. Now, all we have to do is place the 8-bit dough PCB inside and close it up. And it's already primed to play. Why, just look at it go! The indicator LED is also where you plug it in to recharge the battery. Convenient! The same thing applies to the SNES controller. Since this one was already fully disassembled, it takes a bit more effort, but it's easy. Hope you have all the pieces! Now, just like with the NES, we simply place the 8-bit dough PCB in the controller body and close her up. And just like that, you're done. Now go play, unencumbered by cables. Everything old is new again, with 8-bit dough. And just like that, classic technology is brought into the modern age using... witchcraft. Any questions? How did that video play without a projector in the room? Alright class, sorry I'm late, I was... Who are you? Hi. Cheese it! Whew. All right, made it. <laughs> so, uh, getting these guys put together, that's the easy part. But the big question is, how well do they work? I mean, is there going to be any lag? Anything noticeable? Any difference in how they respond? Only one way to check. Time for some real old school gaming. For this test, I brought out the old NES that I rebuilt in a previous video. Obviously, Bluetooth wasn't even invented yet in 1985. So, how are we going to connect a wireless controller to a 30-year-old box that never had that capability? With an 8-bit dough retro receiver, of course. What, do you think they only went one way? At first I couldn't get them to sync up. It was kind of annoying and uh, honestly a little discouraging. However, with a bit of stubborn persistence and a bit of research, I found out that I needed to update the firmware for the receivers. After that, they synced up. Given that I know Super Mario Brothers like the back of my hand, I figured that would be the best game to test the controller on. If there's any delay in the response, I can't tell. The controller was as responsive as a brand new piece of hardware fresh out of the box. Well, I mean, technically it is, but it felt like original equipment that had never been taken out of the packaging until just now. And that's a good thing. Same with the Super Nintendo controller. Hmm? 
don't let the gameplay fool you. The controller is really responsive. I just... I'm not that good at Super Mario World. I think I need some practice. Overall, for $20 a piece, I'd say these were a pretty good investment. The only thing I don't really like is how the uh, indicator light kind of sits loosely in the uh, cable hole. I mean, that could easily be fixed by putting a dab of hot glue in there or super glue or whatever adhesive you prefer. But you see what I mean. It, the LED doesn't sit snug and that doesn't sit well with me but it's not a deal breaker and if you're worried about it you don't necessarily have to take apart a genuine Nintendo controller I mean Circa makes a uh, pretty damn good replica even their PCBs are like almost exactly the same so their level of detail on the on the build inside and out is pretty admirable and yeah you could spend a couple bucks more and get a pre-built controller from 8-bit dough but these are a pretty good alternative if you want to save a couple bucks and still have a Bluetooth controller for your retro systems would I recommend these to my friends hell yeah what do you think I'm doing right now well guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, let me know by giving that like button a bop. Leave some comments down below, and don't be afraid to tinker. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully, it'll amaze.